This lesson is for section 9.5 on equations of parabolas. So our objective for today is to write equations of parabolas in conics form. Now in our first example, uh, we have pretty generic directions. It just says write the equation in standard form and then you're gonna go ahead and graph it on your own. Now when it says write the equation in standard form, it's basically saying it could be an ellipse, it could be a circle, it could be a hyperbola, you figure it out. Now in this case, when we look at the equation, we recognize that there is only one term that is quadratic. The y is the only term here that is a quadratic term, so that means this must be a parabola. So what we do next is we separate the y's from the x's, okay? So I'm gonna move these two terms to the, the left-hand side. You could leave these here and you can move the negative four x and the negative eight, but I like moving the y squared here first because that creates a positive y squared. So I'm gonna move that y squared to the left. I'll move the four y to the left and I'm left with negative four x minus eight on the right. Now to put this equation in its proper form, we're gonna have to complete the square here on the left-hand side. So whatever term is squared, you wanna turn that into a perfect square. So what we'll do is we'll cut the four y in half. So we cut negative four in half, we get negative two squared and you get a positive four. So on the other side here, I have to balance the equation. I am going to add four here. Okay, so this adding four comes from the fact that we just balanced the equation. Now I can rewrite this as y minus two, that quantity squared equals negative four x minus four. And then from here, what we're gonna do is factor out that negative four. So we can write that as x plus one on the inside here. So we have the quantity y minus two squared equals negative four times x plus one. So that's our equation in standard form. And then to graph this, of course, we know that this is gonna open to the left because this value here in front of that linear term is negative, and um, the p-value here, since 4p is equal to negative 4, the p-value here is just negative 1. So I would like you guys to go ahead and graph this all on your own, and you can check the key if you want, um, and then we'll move on now to our second part of the lesson. Okay, we move on now to writing equations of a parabola when we're given specific information. So in number two, we're told that the vertex of the parabola is at eight, six, and a focus, the only focus, is gonna be at two, six. Now your first step should always be to kind of sketch this out. So if you have a vertex at eight, six, the vertex is somewhere here, um, your focus is to the left of that coordinate over here, which means then your parabola has to open around the focus like this. Okay, so it's really important to get just a basic idea of what that sketch looks like. So now that tells us that in the general form, we have y minus the y value here, which is six squared, equaling some value, which we don't know quite yet, multiplied by x minus eight. So this would fit the general form so far using the vertex that it's given and the fact that it's opening to the left. Now to figure out what value we'll put out in front of that linear term, remember this relates back to your p value. This um, constant is equal to 4p. Now in this case, our parabola opens to the left, so we wanna make sure that we have a negative sign out in front of 4p, okay? Because it's definitely opening to the left. This is a little detail that sometimes students forget, so make sure that you're always paying attention to the direction it's opening. Now all we have left to do is figure out what our p-value is. Now p is the distance between your focus and your center. So if we go back to the coordinates here, the distance between 8, 6, and 2, 6, well that is a total of 6 units long. So um, if p is 6, we multiply 6 times 4 and we end up with 24. So this would be the general form for this parabola in conics form. Okay, in example three, uh, we're given the vertex one more time, but now the information changes a little bit. They give you the equation for the directrix. So we always wanna sketch this so we have a good idea of what's going on in this parabola. We have a point, one seven, that indicates the vertex for the parabola. And then we have a line, y equals three. Well, that line has to lie below that point. So this is the directrix lying below the point. Now that tells you the direction that the parabola opens. This parabola must open up in order for the directrix here to be behind it like this. So now that tells us the general form for this parabola, we know that the x term will be squared. So we have x minus, and in this case, because they give you the vertex, we can use x minus one squared equals, on the other side, we don't know what the constant is quite yet. We do know, however, that it is positive. So you might wanna make a note to yourself since it's opening up, that p value here is gonna end up being positive. And then we have um, y minus seven. Okay, this is our linear term here. So now all that's left is to figure out what constant we're gonna put in front of that linear term. Remember, that's dictated by the p-value. So if we come back to our graph, p also represents the distance from your vertex to your directrix. So if I were to plot a point directly below 
that vertex here and connect it with a line, I want to know how long is that segment. Well, I already know that the point V here has uh, coordinates 1, 7. Your vertex is at 1, 7. And the coordinate below it has to share the exact same x value, right? It's directly below it, so the same x value would be 1. Then it has to have a y value of 3 because it's on the line y equals 3. So if we look at the distance here, that overall distance is 4. So P here is 4. Now to find the value that we put in front of that linear term, we have to multiply that by 4. We end up with 4 times 4, which is 16. So we're going to plug 16 in here, and it is positive. And this will give us the equation for that parabola. Okay, our final example is a little bit trickier than the other two. Here they give you the focus and they give you the directrix of the parabola. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a sketch. And uh, for the focus, if it lies at negative 4, negative 6, it's somewhere in that third quadrant. We'll just put it somewhere like right here. Now I want to label this F so I remind myself that this is not the vertex of the parabola. Sometimes students will mistakenly use that as the vertex once they're given one of the points. So make sure you do note that this is just the focus. Now the directrix is um, given also, and it's the equation of a horizontal line. Now that horizontal line lies below the x-axis, but it lies above the focus. So this tells us some stuff about the um, parabola. We know that this parabola is going to open downward, and that vertex will lie in between that line and your focus. It's going to lie halfway in between, because remember the overall distance here, that's 2p units. p going this way, p going that way. So if we just finish the sketch off, this is what your parabola should look like, okay? Now, that tells me then that when I draw the general form of that parabola, I'm going to square the x term, and I should have a negative out in front of the linear term, the y term. So this is just the general form. Now, notice I'm leaving blanks this time where the vertex normally lies because we don't actually know what the vertex is. So what we're going to have to do is find the overall distance between our focus and our directrix, and then we can cut that distance in half to get p. So if we look, the equation y equals negative 2, now that's always a y value. Well, the difference between where your focus is at, at y equals negative 6, and the line y equals negative 2, that's a total distance of 4 units, which makes, so if that's 4 units long, that makes p equal to 2. It's cut in half. So that gives us our p-value. So when we um, find the value that goes in front of our linear term, remember we just multiply p times 4. So we get 8. So that's why there's a negative 8 here, because it's opening downward. And then to find your vertex, you're just going to shift your focus up two points. So, or, I'm sorry, up two units. So if we shift this up two units, we're only affecting the y-coordinate. So we'll be at negative 4, negative 4. So the um, vertex at negative 4, negative 4 means we're going to place a positive 4 here and a positive 4 here. So this is the conic form for this parabola, and that actually ends the lesson. So a nice and short one for you. I know I had a lot of long videos for you, and I appreciate you guys watching all of them and doing such a great job in class. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Make sure you do ask questions because these can get a little bit tricky with, you know, all the different vocabulary words and figuring out your p-value and then knowing when to multiply it by 4 and all that good stuff. So get some practice, and you'll be great at it.